is a machine design project um, if you're a student of NUA or any other university in China probably you'll encounter the same project so we're gonna design this system here and in this system they have a motor here and power is being transmitted by this belt and pulley system this is pulley and this is belt so this belt rotates and this pulley rotates and this belt transmits the rotating rotation speed to this pulley and there is a shaft here and through this shaft tra it's transmitted to this gearbox what it what does it gearbox do it reduces rotation speed for a specific amount so, so that we can use it in another system so this is small gear this is a big gear so if it's rotating more it's rotating less so it's reducing reducing speed <coughs> So this is input shaft here and this is output shaft for gear and this is coupling. If you zoom here a little bit more. Sorry. Okay. So this is coupling and in it goes to another system we were a specific rotation speed is needed. This is another system where, where we're going to use it, so we don't have to care about that part. So in our case, we're going to design this gearbox. To design this gearbox, we need the data from this motor and to the data from this belt and pulley system. So to s uh, to start the design, we need to care about all these components until this coupling. And these are actually um, I would say these are bearings to support the shaft. This, the, this one bearing, two bearing, three, four, and there were another two bearing in pulley shaft. So coupling is sort of thing. So it's still like couples to different parts. Uh, for example, two different shafts. It could be like not aligned or something else. It's, it's going to couple them together. Anyway, to go through the design process, Lao Shi actually gave some information. This is strength ID number. Hopefully, it's not going to change for you because it was my data and this year it was the same data for everyone. I'm not sure whether it's going to change or not, but hopefully, it's not going to change. So, if you lost strength number is one, you're going to get these data if you <coughs> lost strength number is two you're gonna get this number two data so what it is it's force it's given 2300 newton my strength number was four at the end so this is my data back in 2013 sorry 2014 I guess okay uh, and then this is a working speed of conveyor belt so I told you this is a belt right conveyor belt so this is this belt rotates at 1.5 meter per second and drum diameter D 400 millimeter is this drum diameter and working hours 24 so our system should work 24 hours and 5 years constantly so within this time period our system shouldn't go for any loss or shouldn't get shut down Okay, how do you start designing? Let's go back to a standard calculation. So this is a standard calculation I did. Um, okay, this is output parameter of the conveyor. So these parameters are given by Laoshe. The system specification, and this is efficiency. If I tell about efficiency. It has a weight, right? This this also has a weight. This also has a weight. So in every step, power goes from here to here, here to here, then here to here. Every step it reduces some power because it has to move some unnecessary weight. So power is if we give hundred percent power here at the at the end, we don't get hundred percent output here. So efficiency is not hundred percent. So it gets lost, right? But we have to make sure we eliminate those 
efficiency losses from our design so that's how you multiply with different efficiencies here it's belt the efficiency loss of belt this is bearing because bearing has friction and it actually doesn't work 100% this is gear gearing actually works for um, in most of the cases 98 96 90 percent but in a worst case scenario um, the spar gear actually sometimes can work 60 percent and it's just worthless but for better performance I will suggest you to use worm gear or helical gears and this is coupling so efficiency here in this coupling is also not 100 percent because at the beginning of the very fresh second when this guy rotates this guy doesn't rotate immediately it needs a little bit of power to rotate this guy so efficiency gets lost okay then these are the efficiency and this is calculated power what does it mean to run our whole system how much power do we need To run this whole system, how much power we need? We multiply force time velocity divided by 1000, we get the power required per hour, so it's just 2.7 kilowatt. So we are getting power here from this motor, right? So this motor should be beyond 2.7 kilowatt because if we choose any motor less than 2.7 kilowatt, this system is not gonna work and PD actually we have got this one after multiplying with this efficiency actually dividing by efficiency okay and then we go for selection model we know how much power it's needed then we go for selecting this model we go to market to buy and these are the models actually power is 4. Point. We, we normally check out handbook Lao she gave you a pink handbook check that handbook out or the better one is Chinese one but if you can figure it out how figure it out how it works but it's okay if you have the Ch English one that'd be fine so I've chosen a motor for up 4 kilowatt and rotation speed here this guy this shaft rotates at 980 revolution per minute and volt is not important these are not important okay this is motor number and n means rotation speed how fast this whole system is rotating in rpm because uh, Laoshi gave us if you remember some values like 1.1 meter per second we have to convert them into rpm so this is conversion into rpm okay and i1 i2 that means um, transmission ratio this guy is small this guy is big right so there have if this guy rotates faster this guy rotates slower so they have a transmission ratio between the, for example if this rotates three times this rotates one time so the transmission ratio is three to one same thing here if it rotates four times if it rotates one time transmission ratio will be four to one it could be any number but um, normally you go for prime, prime numbers Okay, then we got the motors, we got the transmission ratios. So for V valve transmission ratio from here to here, it's recommended 3 to 6. For gear, it's recommended 2 to 8. 3 to 8. You can choose any number for. Uh, actually, here, the requirements are given by the guys who told you to design. So you're designing for that specific transmission ratio. Okay, then we go for V belt design because this is V belt. We need the parameters from V belt until here. So this PC means a four kilowatt we got from motor, and this KA is actually working factor because 
even if we delete the efficiencies after all we have other factors that will stop our machine from not from working because time to time maybe it will go for maintenance or time to time it might get broken or we might need to change the bearing so that's we need to eliminate them so we have multiplied with this working factor 1.3 so if our system is 100% we are making 30% more stronger okay then these all you can go through the book machine design book to learn more and this L is length of belt so length is from here to here how long it is and this is actually reference it should be actually this number 650 mm. okay we got this number here right 2100 but this guy is not available in the market so we checked out the handbook we have got something 2000 year or number like this belt standard right ISO standard so this is available this is not available but our calculation gave us this number so you have chosen this number from market you can see from tabulate one to it's available in the book machine design book and this guy A means center distance so we know the length of belt and diameter of this pulley so how far it should be mounted and this is center distance so from here from this cross to this cross or if I say it a different different way from this shaft center to this shaft center and this alpha is called acute angle so if this guy is small this guy is big so belt is sort of like angled right from this side to that side and that angle is called acute angle if it is less than 120 degree it's not gonna work so in our case we have got 156 so it's feasible okay the German number B belts I'm giving you a better example here so this is pulley right so these are belts one two three four five in this case the five belts if we have more power we might need more belts or sometimes um, there have one belt that's like quite thick but in this case these are called V belts because if we cut this in cross section if I see it from this side this looks sort of V okay then this is stiff num uh, number a belt we, we have all these parameters from here you can look up the tables and we have we need 4.085 belts but belts number couldn't be fraction so you have taken five belts we take something more because if we take less it's gonna break so FQ that means uh, actually in this shaft how much power it needs to rotate the this belt and pulley system maybe power here in this shaft or power in this shaft okay then we are done with this <coughs> um, this belt design now we're gonna go to design this gearbox if I, if I give you a better picture of this gearbox you will see it sort of like this guy this is belt and pulley maybe somewhere else in the out here we don't see it there uh, see it here maybe the motor or other pulley and this shaft is getting in and this is gear small gear this is big gear and this is casing outer casing to cover up the whole system okay and then if we go back to the calculation gear design first g1 means teeth number Okay, this Z1 means teeth number of this guy. First, we assume 26, it's better Sem from 17 to 21. But if you want more smooth transmission, that means uh, will be less noise, then you should go for bigger numbers. So, because there, if there are more teeth here, 
there will be more contact between these two guys and it will be it will create less noise and this is actually transmission ratio from here to here if this guy rotates four times this guy rotates one time so that's four transmission ratio so you multiply with transmission ratio and this teeth number you get another teeth number of this guy Z2 okay then you can look up these numbers in book it'll be too <laughs> complicated for you guys to explain this guy is important D1 it is a um, reference diameter of these gears how much from this side all the way to this side so this means bigger or equal so the number you get here from for example 65 from here to here this diameter should be bigger than this number or equal if it's smaller our uh, gear will have less materials and the amount of power we have the amount of torque for example here this guy it's um, putting into this shaft will not withstand with our system Okay, then calculate module. This is most, I think, most com confusing things for you guys. Module is the ratio between diameter and teeth number. For example, in we have got 65, right, for diameter from here to here. But how many teeth it can have? This teeth, it can have 26. It can have 15, or it can have like 2,000 teeth. It's possible, right? but if we have 2000 teeth here just imagine how thin it would be so we cannot have 2000 we cannot have 10 or less we should go for an optimized number and what that optimized number is called module and people actually did some researches and say this number is better for this sort of gear so in this amount of diameter this number two is available we look up the handbook we take actually a strand module for now this is reference teeth number this is reference diameter so you have got a reference module this is not the final module okay then I keep going keep going here in this section this is actually the final module M should be greater than or equal this number whatever we've got here so we look up the handbook we, or we check up market that this number of module is not available in the market so we go for something like 2 3 3.5 there are two series of modules you can look up the handbook it's in chapter 10 I guess I forgot the table number anyway <coughs> so we take module 2 so what does it mean rich in this Specific diameter, the specific number of teeth is available, and the ratio between diameter and the teeth number is 2. That is module. Okay, then if we divide our diameter by this mo real module, we get the real teeth number. So here it's showing us 32.96, but in reality, the teeth number cannot be a fraction. So we take like 33. It's better if we if normally if uh, you should take prime number for z1 otherwise it's it will have trouble to have like better transmission it will not match up easily so here you could have taken like 34 but it's not recommended because it's not a prime number okay then we multiply with transmission ratio we get other teeth number so the if it is rotating four times if it's rotating one time so transmission ratio is four to one right so you multiply with teeth number of this one with transmission ratio you get the teeth number of this one 
accordingly because it's subsequent right okay and these guys are actually the most important thing let me make it red make it okay because logic is gonna ask you a lot about this about these parameters d1 uh, I told you right we calculated the reference diameter of this from here to here but this d1 is actual diameter from here to here what it should be according to these numbers module and teeth number so we multiply module and teeth number we get actual diameter here so this is d1 so actually this is a mistake this should be d2 so d2 is mc2 so m module is 2 and we have teeth number z2 is here 132 we have got to 64 so d1 is from here to here or from here from here to here d1 from here to here d2 from here to here so if we see from this side we see just two circles right one big circle sorry one small circle and if we go to drawing a kind of st standard drawing see these two circles one is this guy small for small gear but this gear if we see it from this side we see this small circle and another is this guy and it's contacting here this contact point and these are called actually prime circle for gear and these are actually center line not solid line not dot dash line because these two lines are imaginary because we don't know where it's contacting in real life we, we just imagine there a line in contact most important a center distance Lashi asked a lot about this because what does it mean we know the diameter of this one right and where it's contacting so how far it should be mounted so this is one shaft this is another shaft the center of mounting of this gear and center of mounting of this gear how far it should be from here all the way down to here this is called center distance a how do you get it we plus we add this to d1 d2 and divide by 2 these two are actually diameter not radius we make it radius and you get the center distance here so here center distance is if we annotate it from this center to this center so this is our center dis distance if I show you the exact drawing of that calculation it should be 9 here it is you see 165 from from this center all the way to this center and if you go back to calculation it's perfectly 165 okay then we go for B and what does it B means um, it's called face width we know this diameter from here to here right but we don't know how much from here to all the way the other side diagonal um, across this line so this is called face width from here to here 
normally the driving gear should be bigger than driven be driven gear so here this gear is driving because power is coming from this way and going out to that way so driving gear will have bigger face width so here 72 this is smaller number so we put this number as um, bigger gear actually I should, I should say driven gear so 72 is driven gear so this guy here to here should be driven gear and we add 5 to 16 more for getting driving gear so that is B1 so this is driving gear so driving is 80 so from here to here it's 80 from here to here it's 72.6 Okay, now we have got <coughs> this V belt, all the calculations. We have got two gears, parameters. Now we need two shafts, right? The shaft is going through the gear. So this is all shaft design calculation you can go through. Important thing is D mean. That means diameter of shaft minimum. This high speed shaft, that means. This guy is rotating faster, so it's in high speed. This guy is rotating slower, so it's low speed. Call it low speed shaft. High speed shaft, low speed shaft. And D mean is minimum diameter this shaft should be for our specific force. So here we have got um, 24.75. It could be like here out there, you're gonna see it. Minimum diameter. For for low speed high low speed shaft, we can say here the smallest portion of um, shaft. It should be twenty five point. This guy should be bigger than this guy. So I'm taking thirty. So thirty is safe for uh, and for low speed shaft it's the same T minimum this guy here so high speed shaft should be somewhere else here and for low speed shaft the minimum it's this guy and we are going to mount this into a bearing this is the bearing if we cannot see it clearly this guy well, what it does it actually helps the whole system to rotate frictionless Frictionless. That would I shouldn't say frictionlessly, but it reduces the friction. So we calculate the torque, we calculate the radial force, then we go to tangential force, then dynamic load. You can look up the book word. This means and this guy is important here. This is called um, dynamic load factor. Um, you can look up the handbook. What does it mean? And what it means actually if this guy is rotating constantly again and again so it's dynamic load and our bearing has a life cycle it can take until this amount of dynamic load because different bearing are designed differently materials are different so, uh, so dynamic loads f for them maximum dynamic load is different actually these data we get from manufacturers they provide their gear can so sorry their bearing can take this much dynamic load so we check from our calculation we've got 35 right so we sh should choose some gears which will be bigger than this number which will have bigger dynamic load than this one okay so we have checked out the handbook we have taken this uh, I can see the handbook <laughs> um, sorry I cannot show let me see I have it here. I think they have some tables here. Okay, this is trying. This is also a trying. These are motors. These are motors you see this is, um, kilowatt and this is rotation speed we normally check this kilowatt 
for example look for in our case we have got two point something right so you have chosen this four kilowatt motor and rotation speed if this is too much we go for another series like this is small Check out the handbook. We take this bearing, we and we get the parameters. These are the bearing. No, D means diameter, where shaft and this bearing is contacting, and this D means outer from here to here outer diameter, and B is from here to here diagonally. If I show you standard bearing, let me see. This is standard bearing. So diameter D is actually here. Shaft is being mounted here, right? Actually, in most of the cases, bearing are available in like mm, good numbers, like 30, 35, 40, 45. But if we get a fraction number, your shaft is a fraction number, then these guys not well mounted. You need to use some gasket or something else, and that's not good for your assembly and this is called inner rest this is called outer rest and these are the balls and this is called a ring and this ball bearing you can see clearly these are balls some bearings are not made of balls those are um, tapered thingy inside and those are called thirst bearing this is called roller ball bearing and we use this one in our design because it's easy to draw if we cut this guy from the middle and see it from top side we see sort of a square here and sort of a square here that's why you have chosen this bearing and, but in general case thrust bearing can take more load and works better than this guy okay I think this is enough for our case and let's see see you in the next video